Good morning, friends. I am Patty Elhoff, the author of Upcycle with Decoupage, and today I would like to show you one of the easiest furniture makeovers you will ever see. And here's what we started out with. Now this is just a little wooden plant stand that I got on Craigslist for $5. But you could do this on any piece of wooden furniture that you have. And something else that's interesting is if you see on the right there, that is a paper tablecloth. And in addition to the paper tablecloth, all you're going to need are a few supplies. You're going to need scissors, decoupage glue, paint brushes, nail files, and a top coat to go along with your paper tablecloth. Now I mentioned that you may need one other supply and that may be paint. If the surface that you're working on is a little too dark in color, it may show through the tablecloth. So you want to make sure you're painting your starting project, at least a lighter color. And I'd like to suggest chalk paint. And here are the two main reasons for chalk paint no sanding that's right you don't have to sand your furniture at all you just get right to work and no base coat you just start right in using the chalk paint and the first thing you want to do is place the tablecloth over a section that you want to cover and just cut out a piece that's larger than that surface so it will overlap a little bit on the sides like this then we're going to apply decoupage glue just to one section. And we're going to carefully place the paper over that section. Now I have a nice straight edge in the front here because I'm going to line this pattern up, but you don't have to do this. You can overlap on all sides. You may have noticed there are a few chips and dents in the top of this piece, which doesn't matter at all. And I'm using this piece, as a matter of fact, to show you how easy it is to work on even an unusual piece like this. So I'm going to continue around the top doing the same thing, adding decoupage glue to one corner, pressing the paper down firmly. You don't want there to be any lumps in there, and you want to get any excess decoupage glue out. And I'm going to finish the top this way. Now I decided I didn't want to cover the drawer with the paper, so I pulled the drawer out and I'm adding decoupage glue around this rim here. And then I'm going to apply a section of the tablecloth again. And I'm going to line it up somewhat. It's not exact, but it still looks very nice. Now the top is still drying and this dries pretty quickly because we've only used a thin layer of decoupage glue and the paper is quite thin. So you just want to press the paper down over the decoupage glue. Now you can pull this a little bit, but I noticed that the bottom was starting to get a little bit wrinkled. So I only adhered the top and the sides of this piece and then I cut out this center part and I just added some more glue to the bottom and another piece but first I secured all of this down now I'm adding decoupage glue over top of it because I noticed a few wrinkles and I just want to press those out be careful that your fingers don't get too sticky now, unfortunately, my camera must not have been turned on while I was filming this next step. And I'll go back to the original part where we left off. But I wanted to show you 
On that top piece, once it dries, you want to cut off the excess. So take the excess and then take your nail file and file all of the excess edges off. Now that's before you move on to these sides and I'll get right back to that. I apologize that this went out of order. I'm not sure what happened with the camera. In any case, you're just going to file away those end pieces. They come off pretty easily and quickly, but you do want to make sure that your work is dry. Now, once you've done this all around the top and you've got all of the edges filed away, you want to go over to the side and apply decoupage glue again. Put your paper tablecloth over it, smooth out any wrinkles. And you want to, again, apply some decoupage glue. Press the paper tablecloth down. And what I did was I decided that it was starting to get a little bit too wrinkly. So I cut the bottom half off and just lined up the pattern and place that piece over the second half, the bottom part of this piece. When I was done with this side, I went over to the other side and repeated these steps. Now you don't have this same piece of furniture that I do, I'm sure, but this will help you if you've got any unusual openings in a chair or something that you're working on. You simply cut the excess away and then you take the nail file. You could also use a piece of sandpaper and just file those edges away. The nail file makes for a nice clean edge. It gets into smaller or unusual places too. And I did this on both sides. You wanna make sure everything is dry. And once I was all done, here's how the table looked. And after sanding, you want to take a damp cloth and just wipe away any of the residue that's left over from the sanding. And you're then going to apply one more coat of decoupage glue over everywhere that there is paper, just over the paper. You want to do one more coat and let that dry. This next step is optional. I'm showing you on a bottle because I can get a better close up on here. There may be a few wrinkles. So what you may want to do is take either chalk paint or gesso and offload the paint, which just means you're almost working with a dry brush. And you just age the piece a little bit. So a little bit of the white paint goes on and those wrinkles pick up the white paint a little bit more and it's a nice look you may want to practice it on something first to see if you like it or to see how easy or challenging you might find it it's very easy and you may skip this step or you may want to do it i'm going to add it to my piece now that dries very quickly and you always want to protect your work with a top coat or a varnish for a high gloss, I recommend the triple thick, and I'm using a, a spray paint this time, a clear. And for a flat finish, I recommend the Liquitex Matte Varnish. Now the link to my website is right below and you can get these on there. As far as the tablecloth, I will put one or two on my website. However, Party City, believe it or not, Party City, has so many of these and I think this huge one uh, I purchased it for about three and a half dollars maybe four dollars and I can still do so many more projects with this even to match this one so I'm very excited about that and in the meantime here is how our final project looks by the way I found some chalk paint that matched this paper almost identically so I was able to make a matching plant or you can say I decoupaged a little of the tablecloth on there and then I took this outside so that you could see it in the sunlight and we could also get the full view of it everything is so brown out there it's just about turning into springtime here so soon I'll be filming some things outside where we'll have flowers and greenery and it, it will be a much nicer backdrop than all of this brown stuff. <laughs> but hey, I will be very happy to answer any of your questions. Just post them below. 
There is a little pair of scissors off to the bottom right inside this video. And if you click on that, you will subscribe to my videos, which is a huge help to me. I'm always happy to help you guys out. Upcycle with Decoupage is also on Facebook. If you'd like to go over and click like and follow the page, you'll be notified every week when I put a new video out. And guys, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. It's one of my favorite projects, and I'm happy to see some plant green life in there. <laughs> and I will see you guys next week with another video. Thanks again. Bye-bye.